say, say to you today, not our will be done, but yours. Let your kingdom come. Amen. You guys ready? Yes. Yeah. 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 Feel loaded up and ready to go. Okay. So, um, the Lord's been speaking to me this week in a variety of ways, but it all kind of came down to this one word, alignment. Um, but first, I want to say to you that these last three messages that we've had from Papa Bell uh, regarding grace have been pretty phenomenal, and they just kept building and building, and this last one was some serious Angus steak. It was really good stuff. Very challenging, but you know, we need to be challenged by fathers. But I sensed something happening in this, um, could I call it historical rumblings? And so when you see these clues, the pieces come together, the picture becomes clearer. So I want to talk to you about this alignment thing. Um, as an apostolic company, we are receiving an apostolic word. It is conforming us to the will of our Heavenly Father as a corporate body. As we align to it, submit to it, something flows, something happens, something is produced. And so uh, on our last message, Papa said, grace is like a door that we enter into what God has for us. And he, he made this declaration over you, sons of promise, inheritance, and destiny. Now, you can have all the promises and still not feel fulfilled because we are still in an, as a child, if we could say that. So a child still receives benefits, but in order to receive the fullness of what a son gets, sonship provides the way, the grace of sonship, to receive the spiritual anointing to become a mature son. Said so the connection of the spirit is not function and form. That, that right there is like, okay, we could camp there for a while, but we're not. It must be found in the connection that you have with the Father in the Spirit. We cannot be identified apart from that connection. Your identity is found in the Father because it's the Father who says, this is my Son in whom I am well pleased. Now, we also, side note, said there is no male or female, so... This is sons and daughters, and it's all one. But for efficiency's sake, we're just going to call it sonship. Okay, so this particular thing is like uh, an alignment. If you come into alignment with a specific thing, specific things are purposed for you. Um, this is like a pipeline of anointing. It's like a pipeline of flow, okay? Okay. Uh, we'll talk about this in a bit, about the pipeline. But it's about the flow of the Spirit, because it's the Father's Spirit coming through the Father's. Um, several years ago, we had Chris Valentin here, and he spoke a word to the house. And it was at, right before all this stuff started beginning to happen here as an apostolic company. This word was about the anointing oil that was poured upon Aaron's head. And it went down all the way through his beard, through his garment to the very edges of his garment. Okay, this anointing oil was from the Father for the fatherhood. Aaron was a priest, a high priest. And he, he told all of us, you have to get in line with this. You have to get in line with the Father. He called it getting in the drip line. Outside the drip line, you're going to miss it. Now, we all know oil gets on everything. Just look at a kid with a cheeseburger. So it's not like you're not going to get anything, but if you want the fullness, you got to get in the drip line. you got to get in the drip line. So I want you to kind of hold that thought here, and let's go to Psalms 133, where this came out of. You guys know this, right? Bill does. <laughs> okay, read with me. 
Behold, how good and how pleasant it is for brothers to dwell together in unity. It is like the precious oil upon the head, coming down upon the beard, even Aaron's beard, coming down upon the edge of his robes. It is like the dew of Hermon, coming down upon the mountains of Zion, for there the Lord commanded the blessing, life forever. It's good stuff. These are the songs of ascent. So what I want to do first is look at what's in this thing. It's a short one, right? So if you notice, coming down is used three times. The repetition is it comes down, comes down upon the beard, comes down upon the edge of the robes, robes uh, comes down upon the mountains of Zion. So there's a particular direction that the psalmist is telling us about the flow. It comes down. It comes down. Now, a lot of us would prefer that it came horizontal. Not much challenge there, but it comes down. It comes down from fathers to sons. So then the psalmist says to us, he wants to show us what unity is like. Because you can say unity and everybody's like, yeah, amen, brother. But then here's what, here's what it's like. He's saying that it's like precious oil coming down. It is like the dew of Hermon coming down. So he's drawing pictures for us to illustrate it. So let's talk about the context of this. So this psalm is part of the Psalms of Ascent like 120 to 134. Okay, now this is where the Israelites were coming out of exile and coming up to Jerusalem. This is always the progression. We come up to Zion, come up to the holy city of Jerusalem, which is the city of peace, Salem, Salem, Shalom, peace. Okay, when we were visiting Israel this year, Every time we would venture out to go on a trek, we always came back up to Jerusalem. So it's a song of ascent. So this is like a spiritual pilgrimage, could we say? These are also the inner court levels. So you've come from way over here. So I'm, I'm trying to put a pinpoint on the map for you where we're, what we're talking about here. We're talking about inner court stuff, mature stuff, stuff that takes us very close in to the heart of the Father. All right, so now he uses comparison. Uh, unity is like the oil that runs down. It made him consecrated. It made him holy. Brothers in unity have this effect of consecration and holiness. So that's the benefit number one, consecrated, holy, set apart, and a pure expression. This isn't like sort of like, oh, it's sort of like this. No, no, no. It's a particular thing. It's very pure. The second benefit is that it's the, it's like the dew of Hermon. So guys, would y'all throw that picture up? I'm going to show you a picture that we took on our trip. We're standing on Mount Bental in the Golan Heights, overlooking the Hula Valley. And in the distance, can you see it? The mountain with the snow on it? That's Mount Hermon. Mount Hermon is very interesting because it is an unusual place. The, the area has copious amounts of dew. Like they say if you camp out there, when you wake up in the morning, it's like the, it, it has rained all night. That much dew. And that's why, of course, it has snow on the top. Um, the Syrian dews are excessive. And they say of these dews that it is refreshing, quickening life-giving, and it makes fertile. The psalmist compares unity to this. This is what happens when we walk together in alignment. This thing, it's fertile. So physically, Hermon, Mount Hermon, was to Canaan what Aaron was ceremonially to Israel. Its head and its crown this is in the north, okay, the north, from which the fertilizing stores of heaven descended over the land. For not only does one great river, the river Jordan, descend from the slopes of Hermon, it starts there running down, which way? Down 
all the way to down the Jordan Rift Valley. It is like a lifeline of water to a dry desert, a pipeline, if you will. This is the River Jordan. It issues from the roots, but the giant mountain is also constantly gathering and sending off clouds, and those float down even to the southern Zion. So it's interesting also that this mountain is on the borderland. It strides the border between Lebanon and Syria. So what you see here, we're standing in Israel looking towards Syria and Lebanon. Its southern slopes are in Israel. It straddles the border. How pleasant it is when brothers dwell in unity. Read the headlines? Interesting, huh? So that's the head and the crown. So invigorating, quickening, refreshing, full of life, fertility or productiveness. So God is painting a bullseye with this song. This bullseye is right where what? He commands a blessing, life forevermore. So all provision comes through this pipeline of anointing, okay? It's consecrated, pure, fertile, life-giving. So why do we need this picture? Because when God puts a bullseye on something, we usually don't recognize it. We usually kind of need a little leading to it. We need some revelation. We need eyes to see, ears to hear, right? So what is our conclusion? As dew flows, as oil flows, so also flows covenantal blessings down. So when you align with the Spirit and you say, yes, your will, not mine, but your will be done, you're in an alignment. But there's more to this story. Okay, the pipeline. I told you I was going to tell you about this. Some of you have heard this story. I have this vision. It's all black. I know, you know, you know I'm in a pipeline. And way at the end the opening, little bitty, and I can see sort of a horizon, and I'm thinking, dang, this is not good. You know, suddenly somebody says, and this is not a pipe dream. And the whole thing explodes, and I can see the full vista. So how often has Papa talked in this utopian terms of, of what the kingdom of God is, what's being created here through a people? This is not a pipe. I'm declaring this to you. This is not a pipe dream. Brothers dwelling in unity is not a pipe dream. This is not a false hope. This is something the Lord is manifesting, okay? So it's kind of like a car, you know, you, particularly you guys, you know what happens when the tires aren't in line? <laughs> you know, you get weird wear on your tires. You know, when Joel and I are not in alignment, we're like, nah, 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 nah. but you know, when we, when we present ourselves to each other and, and, and humble ourselves to one another, lay our wills down, our opinions and what we're thinking is right, because this is never the point anyway, right? We get in alignment, man, the pipeline is flowing. It's all good. <laughs> yeah. Mm. So Paul exhorts us in Romans 12 too, be not conformed to this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind. Why? So that you can prove what is good, acceptable, and the perfect will of God. So when you're in alignment, something happens in the earth. You get to prove this perfectly good, acceptable will of God. This is so important. How many times has Papa Bill said, Jesus is the pattern son. He's the model. He's the one we pattern ourselves after. We follow the pattern. Paul says, follow me as I follow Christ. Not only is Jesus a pattern, but as we line up with Jesus, we become the pattern. We become the model. It's about becoming. So Jesus is always aligning with the Father's will, yes? He was so aligned, of course we know. He gave everything to it. But occasionally Jesus had to go retreat into solitude and pray. So what was that about? Well, there's so many powers, principalities, spirits, voices, people. Everybody's tugging on him. Everybody's saying, we want this, you're this, do that, da, da, da. And pretty soon you have to kind of go, all right, I need to go reposition myself before the Father. I need to get, these might even be good ideas and good directions, but I want this direction, and that's it. So he goes and he presents himself to the Father and gets repositioned. Prayer, presenting yourself, opening up and saying, God, not my will, but yours be done. This positions you. This is the point of being one 
with the will of the Father, is you have to get in the position. And this is what the solitude did for him, you know, going and presenting himself before the Father. So even, even so, you know, the disciples are like, wait, you're going to, you're going to go where? You're, no, you're going to, no, you're not going to do that, are you? You know? So, so finally they're going, oh, but Jesus, how, how then should we pray? He says, here's how you pray. Father who art in heaven, hallowed be your name. Papa preached on this last week. Not our will, but yours be done. Let your kingdom calm. This is how you pray. Bill said, until you subject yourself to the will of the Father, you will not be able to receive the fullness. Jesus gave this example. So as he stood on the mountain of olives in Gethsemane, and he's looking out across the valley to the city, it was just an incredible time of pressure. But he knows that that's his next step the critical step, the final step, the step of ascent. He's singing a song of ascent. Every step we take, the closer we get, the more exacting and the more critical each step becomes because we're being perfected into a particular image and aligned with the will of God. You're, you, uh, and, okay, side note here, because this is really important, I think. Yeah, I hear this. So Bill, Bill says this to us. There are a lot of spiritual daddies out there, but there is a spiritual father for each of us, and there is a spiritual father in this house. You don't know if it's your spiritual father until that, that relationship gets tested. Then you find out what you maybe you thought was... The connection isn't the connection. And it's not like you can't receive from a lot of spiritual fathers, but there is one spiritual father in your life that the Lord is, is God a bullseye coming right through. Why? Because he's teaching us something. He's teaching us how to align with one another. And if you have your heart right in alignment and the spiritual father gets off, the, the Lord will correct them. The Lord will totally bring everything into a line, but he needs a place to go right there. He needs a heart that's right to be able to do this. You know, Bill had this story of being chosen for a task of aligning churches with the father, the spiritual father. He went and did this, and he was quite young. Uh, but there was a reason he was chosen. He was chosen because he was one in the spirit. Now, this connection we're talking about is a spiritual connection because otherwise you will stumble over the flesh and miss your spiritual connection. Remember, we see who someone is without stumbling over who they're not. Okay? We, we see who someone is without stumbling over who they're not. How many times have <laughs> Bloody knees right here, baby. <laughs> This is a blueprint. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done. Connect with the Father. That will be challenged. It will be tested. Oftentimes that testing causes people to run away because they kind of really had their own opinion that was really more of a uh, conduit into their life. So the whole point is like not that you get it right, but that you get aligned because the Lord is the one who makes it right. Okay, um, so alignment, alignment has several aspects to it. It's reproductive. Remember we said the dews are fer fertile, they make fertile. So alignment's reproductive like father, like son. So as we follow the pattern son, we become a pattern for the sons. Okay, alignment is obedient because the will will resist. That's kind of, anytime my will gets riled up, I go, God must be doing something. It's become a red flag to me. Like, I need to go check that out. Let me run at that. So it's obedient. It resists. It wants its own way. It wants, it, frankly, it wants its own clone. Daddies don't want clones. Daddies want sons. So if you feel clonish, scope, scope that out. Okay, so alignment happens in the heart. Otherwise, we have a divided heart. 
I will tell you for myself, and I'm sure you guys are the same way. When my heart's divided, I didn't know it. I did not know my heart was divided. But when the challenge came, it became apparently apparent to me that, so, so challenge is so, so, so important. So we recognize the power that's in alignment whenever a group of people is willing to divest themselves of self-determined outcomes and invest themselves instead in common or corporate union in order to be the expression of the Lord on the earth. So when a people, and so I'm speaking to you individually, but I'm also speaking to you as a people. When we divest ourselves of self-will, our own opinion, our own way, the way we think it should go, it's amazing what happens. There's so much power in this. And it's not mob rule, by the way, okay? I'm just saying. It's not that kind of power. Um, so I was reading this story. Um, it's not that great of a book, but whatever. But of course, you know, how God talks to you through many things. So this guy loses fortune in Mexico. This is like when the colonies were separating from the European colonial powers, right? So he loses his fortune in Mexico. He goes to Cuba, and he wins some property in Spain in a billiard game. So he goes to Spain, and he's going to scope out his property that he won. Now, it's huge. It's a mansion. It's a vineyard. You know, it's all the the property that goes with creating and selling, storing, and vintages, and all this kind of stuff. And he arrives with the legal eagle who's transferring the property, and he looks, and it's a ruin. It's a mess. And it's clearly been that way for decades. And he's standing there, and he goes, what happened? And the legal, legal eagle says, so the story is not a new one. The man who owned this property, his great-great-great-grandfather, his great-great-grandfather, his great-grandfather, his grandfather, his father, all these men and all their families broke their back to build this for the generations. And it all landed in the lap of a son who went his own way. From there, it made a journey, sir. Well, he said, senor, or in Spain. It landed in your hands. So now, senor, what will you make of it? And I went, dang. This young man had wanted to chart his own course. How many of us are like that? I was. But I found a higher course. It took me divesting myself of my course in order to do that. But it's an old, old story. So when we look at this body, we see what is prevailing. What's the prevailing wind in this house? Is this an apostolic company? Is this a body of believers that say, your kingdom come, thy will be done? Is this a body of believers that's in alignment? that's experiencing the dew of Hermon? Are you experiencing the oil of anointing? Are you in the flow? Are you aligned? So I'm, I'm pondering all this and treasuring it in my heart, right? I'm going walking in the morning, I'm going along, and I hear something, I look up, and uh, you know how people put PVC out uh, to, like when they've seeded some new grass areas from construction? You know, this PVC is running along the road, and uh, as it turns to go into this area, it's supposed to be sprinkling, because all the, all the sprinklers and everything were out there. There's this like, psh I'll look down and go, oh, dang, the pipes aren't in alignment. And so all the water that was intended for out there was going down the gutter in the street down the hill, watering nothing but concrete. And the seed grass was dying of thirst. Because of the lack of alignment, the potential in the seed could not be unlocked. So, of course, you know, I'm standing there looking at this, and I'm sure everybody's like, well, she's lazy. But I'm like, tears are going down my eyes. I'm like, God, let us unlock the potential. 
please let us unlock the potential. Show us, teach us, let us align. Let us be in alignment so that nothing is wasted. So let's talk about this flow. Let's talk about in here the oil, okay? Jesus is in the Garden of Gethsemane. Gethsemane means oil press. So here he is positioned in this critical step of his journey. And the pressure on the anointing, Christ is the anointed one, yes? The pressure is so extreme that he's sweating drops of blood. And he's like to the disciples, will you not pray with me? Will you not tarry with me? And here he is, he's like, but, but his, he's already chosen his course. The course is set. And he had to align himself with everything again. Here was this greatest last pressure of being completely abandoned. All the things that would cry out, no, I have to go a different way. He had to purpose in his heart this last step of ascent as he goes up to Jerusalem. So this particular oil of anointing, that's on Aaron is not just any oil. It's a particular oil that Moses was instructed to make for this particular purpose. You see, Aaron was actually Moses' brother. Golden calf, remember that? But now he's being ordained as a high priest. You remember what a high priest does? Presents the people to the father and the father to the people. That means he has to represent a father like this father. They have to be able to recognize that father. In, so, so they're in a particular position. And you know it is as in the New Testament that we're all kings and priests, okay? Now, Aaron was also a father. And so as he was anointed, his sons then got anointed, all right, so this was a particular oil, and it was t he was told to apply it to the crown of Aaron's head, Aaron, the father of the sons. So we, when we stand up here, we're in a particular position for you because we cannot, even a little bit, not even a teeny nancy bit, even though sometimes we get a little mule shoe and some of my Southeast Texas in there, uh, we, we don't have the option of representing anything else but the spirit of the Father. So even though you may get flesh me, what you're really tuning into and what you're really connecting with is the spirit of the Father. The spirit of the Father. Now, okay, uh, in Zechariah, uh, oh, you want to do some extra credit? This was fun. Let's do extra credit, all right? Um, in Zechariah 4, um, you know, I'm just going to get this one out. Zechariah has this crazy vision about this anointing oil, and it's coming out of these uh, olive branches that empty themselves. So there's not only do you get in alignment to receive the oil, but you have to empty it out. You become in and off. So you're in the pipeline, and you are a pipeline, okay? That's the vessel piece. Has anybody who prophesied over me, uh, they're starting to see the, some of the things you said, were like, oh, you're right on target. It's really good. So here's your extra credit. Um, we're going to go to Leviticus. It's a popular book. Leviticus 8. It's in the beginning. Okay, this is so fun. All right, so Moses did what the Lord commanded him in verse 4. Uh, he's consecrating them, right? Everybody's assembled. So uh, he does what the Lord commanded him to do. Moses had Aaron and his sons come near, and he washed them, so he cleaned them, right? And then he put the tunic on, and he girded him with the sash, clothed him with a robe, put the ephod on him, and girded him with the artistic band of the ephod, which he tied it to him. And then he placed the breast piece on him. And in the breast piece, he put the urim and the thummim. He also placed the turban on his head is head. And on the turban, I told you get some of me in there, at its front, and he placed the golden plate, the holy crown, just as the Lord had commanded him. Okay, now flip over to Ephesians 6. Okay, 
when I sat down to talk to the Lord about this, my book falls open on Ephesians 6 with the title Family Relationships. That's the first part of Ephesians 6, Family Relationships. But we're going to skip over to the next thing because what I want you to see is the armor of God. The armor of God comes after the, the relation part. So how do we do this ridiculous unity that nobody seems to talk, everybody talks about nobody walks in, right? Okay, so he's talking about the armor of the Lord, the strength of the Lord. He says, put on the full armor of the Lord. Now, you've all read this before, and we've all done this, right? So da-da-da-da-da, take up the full armor. Um, okay, number 14, stand firm, having girded your loins. Everybody always likes to talk about the helmet salvation, but they don't go, hey, I girded my loins today. Stand firm, having girded your loins with the truth. Put on the breastplate of righteousness, having shod your feet with the preparation of the gospel of peace. In addition to all, taking up the shield of faith, shod your feet, Sharon, the faith with which you will be able to extinguish all the flaming missiles. I love that picture of the evil one. And taking the helmet of salvation and the sword of the spirit, which is the word of God, and with all prayer, petition, pray at all times in the spirit, with this in view. Okay? Now, we all do that. Yeah, I'm going to put on my breastplate, my helmet, and I'm ready. Let's do it some spiritual warfare. I mean, we've all done this, right? We've all read this and trained in this, you know, thou shalt not pass, you know, and we feel pretty good about it. But I want to give you, you know, when I looked at it this time, having read that in Leviticus, I went, oh, dang, look at this. Girded your loins with truth. So the point is it pro that it's productive. Truth produces it's fertile, right? Having put on the breastplate of righteousness. This is breastplate at your heart. You have to have right standing with God and one another to be in alignment, to have these family relationships work. Having shod your feet, da 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 da, da the gospel of peace. You have to walk in peace. You have to walk in peace with one another. That means you are, you are like, that's your target. Whatever else has to move aside for that. In addition, we take up this shield of faith. We have to believe this stuff. The helmet of salvation. How are you thinking? How are you thinking? Has your mind been renewed? And the word of God is this sword of the spirit. So what are you speaking? Are you speaking about all this stuff? Peace and truth. Goodwill toward men. You know, this sort of thing. So I'm like, wow. This is how we do it. This is how you extinguish the flaming missiles. You know, when somebody goes, Pew, and your heart goes, hey, bud, I don't like that. Or that's not the word of God. Or I think we should be doing this or whatever. You know, whatever. This is how you extinguish it. This is, this is how you walk in peace and you create, you build. You see, if you're an apostolic company, you're builders. You are apostolic builders. You're creating, constructing something. All right, so, okay, that was your extra credit. All right, and of course, in Revelation, we have a lamp stand. You know, it has these little pipes full of oil, and it comes out the center when the Spirit of God, there's an endless perpetual supply. When you are in alignment, there is an endless perpetual supply. That's why you can say life forever. You want it? There's a few people who want that. Okay, so now let's talk about fragrance. This oil used on Aaron had a specific fragrance. I mean, it was very exacting what the Lord said had to be in it. For, for the Lord, it was actually a recognizable aroma. So in Exodus 30, Moses is commanding to make this anointing oil for Aaron and his sons. And it was called, quote, the work of a perfumer. Very specific. 2 Corinthians 2, for we are the fragrance of Christ to God. God is smelling Christ when he smells you, this particular fragrance that's created. Among those who are being saved and among those who are perishing, to them an aroma from death to death. To the other, an aroma of life to life. So to the people that aren't getting it, you stink. When you say, no, I've given up my will. I've given up everything for the surpassing worth. They're like, well, you got to die to that? That smells like death to me. Yeah. But to those who get it, man, do you smell good. 
Ephesians 5. Therefore, be imitators, alignment, okay, of God as beloved children and walk in love just as Christ also loved you and gave himself up for us, an offering and a sacrifice to God as a fragrant aroma. There's something about giving up yourself, laying your life down for your brother that is so good. It is Christ. If he walked this path and he took this critical step, who are we to say, no, uh, we have a shortcut, right? Okay, so oil and fragrance. So conclusion, how do we conclude? What do we conclude about this? So I want to say this declaration to you. So I want you to open your heart to receive it, okay? Oil is being released right now in the spirit. It is a particular oil with a particular fragrance with a particular purpose. This psalm begs a response. This time, this season begs a response from you. Pastor talked about Friday night yell. That just was a spontaneous thing that just burst forth. That was a response to something that was happening in the spirit. So the oil being released in the spirit, he, it, this is Pastor saying this, is because of the unity that's been established. We didn't just like the clock goes, near, near, near. oh, it's time. No, no, no. You're the clock. Your hearts have been walking in union. Not any kind. This isn't superficial, right? It's a marriage covenant. For better, for worse, it doesn't matter what our opinions are, whether we agree, disagree, it doesn't matter if challenges come. We're there, and we will never leave, never forsake one another. We may be halfway around the world, but we are one in the spirit, in the spirit. Now, the proof, remember, it has to be proved to the world. The proof of our union is the fruit of the spirit, which is the adornment of the gospel. Do you love that? Like the dew, it refreshes the weary. It cools the heat of anger. It brings ease to difficulties, and it creates growing unto fruitfulness. This is what we're walking in. This is the time. I am prophetically declaring this that I see in the spirit to you, that you may also see, because this is what it's like. He drew a picture for you. It's like the oil flowing down from the fathers to the sons. It is like the invigorating dew that creates provision that flows down from Mount Hermon. This fruitfulness is a specific kind, right? It's, it, there's a specific purpose. This fruitfulness remains. Why? Why is it that this kind of fruitfulness is the fruit that remains? Why? Because it reaches in. It reaches into the history of the forefathers. It reaches into that. Why? Because it's making provision for the sons so that the anointing flows downhill. It flows down. It comes down from heaven and it flows to the sons of the future. Did, did Bill not declare you know, sons of destiny and inheritance. This is why this is happening now. This is why. So what Papa is seeing in the spirit is pretty phenomenal. And I want to declare to you right now, this, this ain't no pop dream. So, Pastor, would you come up, please? If your heart responds to this, this psalm, this time, I want you to open yourself up. And I, Papa, I want you to tell them what you see as the apostolic father of this body, this company, this house. I want you to tell them what you're seeing in the spirit. Yeah, let's all stand up together. Wow, we appreciate the word, Cheryl. And uh, what the Lord begins to lay out, it's like a panoramic view of what's to come. That's what the Lord wants to speak in this hour, to reveal to us what's about to happen. You know, the Bible said that we don't know unless the prophets speak it. And so the Lord is so clearly defining to us how we position ourselves for the next thing that God wants to bring to the earth. And as Cheryl's saying this morning, it's all about aligning yourself. You simply come and place yourself in the place that something can happen for you. 
See, I can't produce the oil. I can't make it happen, but I can stand and receive it. And so when we come into a unity and alignment with the will of God, first of all, starts on a personal level, saying, I give my will to your will. I crucify the old man in its nature, what it wants. And so, Lord, I, I get rid of this, this destiny, and I stand before your destiny. I stand before your purpose. And th that is to be like Christ. He said, behold, I've come to reveal this one. If you've seen me, you've seen the Father. And that's what the church is going to become. We're going to become a people that reflect the Father to the earth. And it looks a lot different than what we may have had previous patterns of religion or previous experiences. We have to kind of just disregard those things and get ready for the new thing. God's going to bring forth and birth a new thing in the midst of us. How many are ready for the new thing? Amen. Because when you get into this alignment, you get under the flow of Aaron's beard. Wow. I mean, just get ready. <laughs> when, when everything begins to come to you from above, it just takes all the struggle away from you. The frustration of life is trying to make something work. But when, when you just come into alignment, the Lord has worked on your behalf. Everything comes from above. All blessings flow from the heavenly place. So, Lord, we set ourselves this morning. We set ourselves to align. Some others might want to proclaim it too. We set ourselves to align ourselves with the will of God. We set ourselves to align with the spirit of the Father upon the earth in this hour. See, and it's not about a man. It's not about people. It's a spirit. And that's what we're aligning with. We're aligning with the spirit. We're one spirit in the Lord together. Amen. Release it. Yeah, we just declare that the Father is not lacking oil. He's just looking for people to pour it out on. And so we don't, he's not looking for people that can catch it or that can hoard it, but he's looking for people that can flow in it. And so we just realign ourselves today with the pure flow, not with the flow that we've had, um, but we want to burn with the oil that he burns with. Amen. Thank the Lord. in all areas of our life, not our will be done, but his will in our relationships, not our will, his will in the body, not our will, but his will. Amen. Anybody else want to respond? Come on, babes. This just confirms message confirms what God has showed me and myself and the word alignment um, really uh, comes to surrendering trusting being obedient and to and it's not about your gifting it's not about your calling I mean that's something God puts in you but to trust in that and surrender and lay it down the word says what Jesus said did He's, you know uh, die to self take up thy cross follow me but with the trust in that and what has happened in that by surrendering and trusting in the Lord and this was just a few weeks ago the Lord showed me um, this is where I want you to serve this is where I want you to serve and that and I said yes sir I'm being obedient to that and from that point forward I'm just watching doors and things flying up people coming to me able to share the word so that's that's the message God has for us as a body so that's what I wanted to share because it's right on she's right on target with what God is saying to all of us trust me believe me surrender and watch me I just come against the wrong image for those of us that had a father that betrayed the father's message i come against that that keeps us that stops us as a whole body from going forward in submission to the father's will and i just break that off for those that have had fathers that have stolen the oil that have hoarded the oils, 
or that perverted the oils. I just release the Father's, the true Father's oils. And that we can go forward. We can begin to go forward to see the true Father and the true oil and to not be afraid and to not be fear, to fearful and rebuke this beautiful thing that God has ordained that earthly fathers have ruined. So we just release the healing for that, that the oil of this father in this house, that pastor has truly, truly healed so much, many of us, and knowing what a father's heart really should be. And I just receive that on behalf of everyone in Jesus' name. Amen. Thank the Lord. You know, one of the things, good, that's good, Deborah. One of the things about oil, several things, but oil brings the spirit of life. It brings healing. Amen. It brings restoration. So I want us this morning, I want us to just let the, the Lord pour his oil on us. How many want to receive the oil of the Lord? Some of you may want to come up to the front. If you don't, that's fine. But let's just open up your hearts and our minds. Lord, we just want to receive a fresh outpouring of the oil of God upon our lives today. There's a freshness that comes as the Lord comes. You know, he said the Lord will come, Jesus Christ, and bring a spirit of refreshing from heaven. And we want that this morning. We want the Lord the spirit of refreshing. We want the fresh oil. And we also want the wine. <laughs> wow. Woo. Man, we love the oil, but man, we love the wine too. So, Lord, give us that fresh outpouring of your spirit this morning, of your, of your oil, of your love, of your wine. And we just receive it. Everybody say, we receive it in Jesus' name. So let's worship the Lord there. Let's, let's sing.